More than one bomb every second for the entire 146 years between 1871 and 2017. What's up guys, Rosh here and welcome to another episode of Common Climate Claims, a series in which we look at some of the dumbest yet most common claims made about climate change. Today's topic was actually requested by one of you, so shout out to Butterfly Films for the suggestion. It's the claim that the one degree of warming we've seen over the last century is small or insignificant. Now, to be fair, one degree doesn't sound like much, so this argument is intuitive if nothing else. The problem is, most of us are using the weather as our point of reference, and wherever you live, the chances are the temperature is changing by a lot more than one degree every day. So this gives us the impression that a change of one degree is insignificant. But of course, there's a big difference between local weather fluctuations and global climate change. And to be honest, I think confusing the two is where this misconception begins. The temperature changes we are used to experiencing are a result of energy moving around the climate system. When it gets cooler where you are, it's probably getting warmer somewhere else. There is no net change in the overall temperature of the planet. But when it comes to global warming, there is. We are talking about a change in the average global temperature. This is more than just energy moving from one place to another as it does for weather. This is an increase in the total energy available to the climate system. And I don't think many people truly comprehend just how much energy this involves. Now, I tried to find a value for the amount of energy it would take to warm the entire planet by one degree, but unfortunately couldn't find one. However, I did find a study which quantified the total amount of energy absorbed by the oceans due to global warming since 1871. And since 90% of global warming has occurred in the oceans, this should give us an indication of the kind of energy we're talking about. It's 436 zettajoules, which apparently means it has 21 zeros on the end. Now, obviously that's a big number, but it's still pretty incomprehensible. So to make it easier to visualize, here's what 88 trillion joules looks like. That's the nuclear explosion over Nagasaki in 1945. In order to get to 436 zettajoules, you would need nearly 5 billion Nagasakis, or 7 billion Hiroshimas, which works out as more than one bomb every second for the entire 146 years between 1871 and 2017. That's a ridiculous amount of energy. And remember, this is only the energy absorbed by the oceans, so yeah, Raising the planet's temperature by one degree isn't anywhere near as insignificant as it sounds. And here's another point I think many people forget. We're talking about global average temperatures. As anyone who's ever studied basic statistics knows, when you make small changes in the average, you end up with much larger changes at the extremes. When it comes to the climate, this means that small changes in global temperature result in much more dramatic changes at the regional level. So while global average temperatures were 1.3 degrees above the pre-industrial level in 2020, the Arctic was a massive 5 degrees above normal. Now, I'm sure at this point, many climate skeptics will be screaming at their screens that the climate has always changed, and that changes in temperature far greater than one degree have occurred many times in Earth's past. But I've addressed those claims in another video, so I won't go over them again here. But the claim we're specifically looking at is that warming of one degree is small, so it's worth putting that in the context of past climate change. Normally, at this point, given my geology background, I'd bring up the fact that although one degree of warming isn't geologically unprecedented, one degree over a period of a hundred years is. It's ten times faster than the normal rate of warming coming out of an ice age, and a hundred times faster than the geologically rapid warming at the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, a period associated with a marine mass extinction. But I'm not going to focus on that. Instead, I'm going to focus on two periods of climatic change that most climate skeptics are going to be very familiar with. The medieval warm period and the little ice age. It's not uncommon for climate skeptics to tell you of the dramatic climatic shifts that occurred during these periods. They'll tell you how, during the medieval warm period, vineyards flourished much further north than they can today, and how Greenland became an attractive prospect to settle for the Vikings. They'll tell you how, during the Little Ice Age, the Thames froze over and harvests failed. 
Now, the extent to which these phenomena were regional or global is debated, but there is evidence to suggest that both were broadly global in scope, and for the sake of argument, that's the assumption I'm going to work with. So how much did global average temperatures change by during these periods? Was it one degree? Two? Three? Well, no. In both cases, at the very most, it was a change of a few tenths of a degree occurring over a period of several centuries. That's less than half the magnitude of current warming, but over a far longer period of time. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Roche, that can't be right. In order for vineyards to flourish in central England, or for the Thames to freeze over, there must have been much larger changes in temperature. And you're right, there were. Local records record much more dramatic periods of warming and cooling during these times. Local records. And that's really the point I'm trying to make. A small change in the average temperature of the entire planet can result in much larger changes at the regional level. So that's why one degree of warming is pretty damn significant. It represents a huge increase in the amount of energy in the climate system and a rate of warming 10 times faster than anything that humans and possibly even the planet has ever experienced. If you want to see more of my content, then don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And if you want me to cover any other topics, then let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.